To find today's lesson, you will go to code.org. That is C O D E dot O R G. Code.org. Hello, fourth grade, and welcome to Computer Lab for the 2020 21 school year. While you are learning at home, I'm very excited to announce that you will be learning some coding this year. To start off this lesson, you will have a video that will walk you through how to get into your account that has been created, as well as how to tackle some of these puzzles that you will have to solve. I hope you have as much fun learning how to code as I did. This is the fundamental language that you will need to learn if you were interested in one day being in DMC or Computer Science Discoveries in middle school. This is also the language that is used to speak to our robots. Okay, let's get started. First, you're gonna to go to your favorite web browser and type in code.org. In the top right-hand corner, you will see sign in. Click sign in. Then you will enter your six letter section code. This code will be the same for all fourth graders. Don't worry if you forget it, it is also on your computer page when you go into the compass. Your code is FDLHYH. Then click go. You will see all of fourth grade is in one class together. You will choose your name. Make sure that if you have duplicate names that you look for the right one. There will be a last initial if there is more than one name. My name is Buzz Lightyear. You will find your secret picture. This will be something your teacher will give to you. Inside, you will see that you are assigned to course E. That is specifically designed for students your age. As I go through, I see, oh my goodness, there are many, many lessons in here. Don't worry about it. This is not all one day's work. This is for the year. Now, when I look, the concepts will be diamonds. They might be things like something to read or a video. And when you complete them, they will color in solid green. If there's an activity that you need to complete, it will be something like lesson extras, unplugged activities, online assessments, questions, or a game level. When you attempt it, but you do too many blocks, it'll be light green. If you do it correctly, it will be dark green. Let's take a look. Lesson one is called sequencing in the maze. If you look, oh, there is a diamond, that will be a video. Oh, in level six, there is a diamond, that will be a video. The other levels that are circles, those will be game levels that you will need to complete. So, the first level starts with a video from an expert who is a computer science major. And she walks us through what this program is going to look like. So, Today, as you can see in this video, it will give you all the ins and outs to block code. Block code is something that is used even at major institutions like Harvard and Berkeley. Underneath of the hood, you will see that there is actually JavaScript written. In code.org, there are four main areas. The first is your play area. This is where your game will actually run. Then you have your toolbox. These are where your commands or your blocks are going to be held. Then you have your workspace. This is where you actually build your program that makes your bird move on the map. And finally, the most important, you have your instructions. Please don't skip these, these are pretty important. Okay, here we go. So let's take a look at the directions first. It says for this puzzle, snap all of the blocks together and click run to watch it. Now, if you are not the strongest reader, that's okay. A lot of coders actually are not strong in reading. There is a little help in here for you. You can click the play button next to the instructions and it will actually read it for you. For there is also all of the blocks together a very cool to tool that I wanna show you. Do you see this little bird in the light bulb? 
That will actually give you two hints if you get stuck. Now, there is also one other really awesome tool. This little book, if you click on it, it will take you out to an amazing tool called Interactive or, or Immersive Reader. Immersive Reader, if I click on Translate, I can scroll down and let's say, mm, je parle français, uh, I'm looking for French. I want to doc do the entire document translated. If I were able to scroll down just a little, you would be able to see a play button here, and it would actually read this entire set of directions to me in French. So there are many, many languages that are supported. Now let's come back and look. So my workspace says that I need three blocks total. Well, right now it looks like I have two blocks sitting in my workspace. My job is going to be to connect those blocks to my when run. Now, if you take a look, now I have three out of three blocks used. So now I'm going to hit my run button and I am going to watch my program go. Yes, it worked. Congratulations, you completed puzzle two. Now my favorite thing is if you click here, you can actually see underneath of those little blocks that look like Legos, this is called JavaScript. And there are major, major universities, even places like Harvard, that teach their first year computer science students using this method. Okay, let's go to level three. If you see level two, it's completely colored in green because we passed that level with all the correct number of blocks. All right, here we go. Level three. Take a look at your bird. It looks like he needs to move a few more spaces. The directions say, drag an extra move forward block out of the toolbox, then attach all the blocks to when run to finish your code. Okay, so let's see, I need four blocks total. One, two, mm, I need one more. Okay, so, oh, there it is. One more move forward. Awesome, now I have four out of four blocks. Let's run the program. Yes, good job. All right, so we have completed puzzle three. We did five lines of code total, and my bubble is completely solid green. All right, let's try this one. Ooh, a little bit more difficult. Use the blocks in the toolbox to build your program. You must get the pig or the bird to the pig. Okay, well, let's take a look here. I am gonna move forward. Mm, let's see, one, two, three three times. Let me run this program and see what happens. Oh, keep coding. Something's not quite right. Okay, I see what I need to do. I need to turn right. So let me grab the turn right block and put that in. And let's try it again. Forward, forward, turn right. Oh no, again. Oh, I have one more. I know what I'm doing this time. So let me add move forward one more time. This is it. I know this is gonna work. Forward, 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 turn right, move forward. A trick that I use sometimes, I will actually stand up in front of my desk and pretend that I am the bird. And sometimes that helps me make sure that I am going the right amount of spaces and doing the right turns. Okay, this one, ooh. Help the bird get to the pig. There's one extra block. Throw the extra block by removing it from the other blocks and dragging it back to the toolbox. Well, let's run the program and see what happens. Hmm, okay. Oh, we hit the dynamite. That's a bad idea. So let's actually follow the directions this time. Let's detach the code throw, move forward back in the trash and connect our pieces. All right, let's see if this works. Oh, I guess and add one more forward. Oh, hmm, it says congratulations, you completed the puzzle. However, you could have used only five blocks. So if you look at this, you will see at the top that level five is a different color. What this means is that my level, I used too many blocks to complete it. Now I can go back and fix this if I would like to, but I don't have to. 
Um, if you want to try to get a perfect score, you're welcome to go back. Let's go to the end flag and take a look. When you are done, it will say you have completed lesson one, try a challenge. This one, there are no lessons that are challenges. You're welcome to go on to level two if you would like, but for this day, you only need to complete lesson one. I hope you guys have as much fun coding as I did. Don't forget to sign out. Bye guys, have fun.